Today is day four of my journaling uh, and vlogging, 11-30-2021. Welcome back again, my friends, this evening, my time anyway. Um, I have successfully gotten through some more uh, more of the foundations today. today. Um, I got through the second half of Join the Odin Community, where we left off last time. Um, and it was actually pretty quick. Um, today was actually a pretty easy day. I just talked, finished up about um, how to, again, we already talked about this, but how to help solve other coding, other problems with people with their coding problems and um, how to be effective with answering and asking questions in the Discord group, being patient, that sort of thing. Um, and that rounded that out. And then I headed on over here to how the web works. I honestly, full disclosure, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have like 13 years of IT experience in the industry professionally. So this stuff is uh, not new to me in, in the slightest. So um, I, I was true to myself and true to the form and true to the Odin project though and I did not skip over it even though I was very very tempted to skip over a lot of this I did watch all the videos I did every single assignment here um, it was very really basic just basically how the internet works the definition of what the what is the internet what's the World Wide Web what's DNS which uh, TCP IP uh, what's uh, you know what's that look like in a stack uh, what server what's a server what's a client uh, how to transfer data, um, really basic stuff. Not for someone that doesn't have an IT background, but for someone like me who has been a sysadmin and an app admin for 13 years, yes, it, it's pretty uh, basic. And um, I did not supply that information when I first started my vlogging here. But yeah, I have I have a substantial IT background already. So, But this is just reinforcement. Um, so I will admit I didn't go through much of the additional resources since um, it's supplemental it's not required I did start listening to the podcast but then I kinda stopped and finished a knowledge check made sure that I understood each of these pieces and then moved on to the next lesson and then this is where it started to get interesting and fun for me anyway actually starting to install stuff and getting the uh, environment set up so this actually also is not new um, it goes through the operating systems and I, I chose uh, Linux as my operating system. I actually installed Xbuntu 20.04 LTS, um, which if you guys don't know, that uh, stands for, um, I think it's um, not long-term storage, uh, long-term support. And uh, it uh, is basically a stable version of Linux, and that's one of the recommended uh uh, flavors of Linux that they recommend using if you're not going to use a Mac and they definitely do not recommend using Windows which is fine uh, I have some Linux experience it's pretty basic but nevertheless uh, they're just basically saying we don't support Windows and we're going to either support you on Mac or Linux and then the next lesson went over the prereqs um, and this is where you install a virtual machine this also is not new to me um, there's the Xbuntu and then VirtualBox I also have experience with that I actually already had it on this machine here I had Ubuntu uh, 20.04 LTS already running I just didn't have Xbuntu so I had to go out and download that via the the link right here but I already had VirtualBox it's pretty sweet it actually I was thinking about doing a walkthrough tutorial on this stuff but they do such a good job here it really doesn't make any sense for me to take that time to go through step by step so I won't um, if you're interested in learning more about that just come out here to the Odin project um, I'll leave a link down below in my um, description of my video um, and you can come out here and look at this yourself uh, <coughs> excuse me so it just goes through the steps of setting up VirtualBox and setting up Xbuntu getting it running um, where to install it, memory, size, allocation. I set mine, they recommended a minimum of 2, two gig uh, because that's what Xbuntu minimally needs to run. I chose, I think, 4 gig, and then hard disk space, they recommended um, 
I did a VDI and they recommended uh, dynamically allocated and 20 gig. Um, I went ahead and did 40. I just doubled everything because I have the capacity for that on my system. Um, and it goes through processors. I have two monitors and it tells you how to um, set up your processors and set them to two or have however many you want to use. I put mine to two. Um, and how to set up your multiple displays. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, and then you, it, it goes through the steps you through the actual install process. Installing guest editions, which is really easy. It's all command line. Um, this is Linux command line if you're not familiar with it. it uh, sudo app get install build essential uh, sudo is how you um, super user upgrade basically that's Linux speak for um, um, UIing to your uh, admin account so that you can install software um, sudo is just the command to use in Linux for that um, you know understanding your new VM this is more for newbies that don't have never used a VM but before just some basic things about it and how to safely shut down the VM when you're done so you don't corrupt your files or lose anything. It talks about the, they call it the whisker menu. I'm not, I've not, not used Xbuntu. It's basically the same thing as Ubuntu, just a little bit more uh, lightweight and a little more GUI friendly. Um, so they talk about this whisker menu, which is basically like the start bar if you're a Windows person like I am. Um, not really into Mac, never have been, but um, so I don't know what the equivalent Mac is, but then it's talking about how to you know, do a command line shut up, power off if you want to do that as well. Um, and then I went into text editors. Yes, I forgot about that. Text editors um, and installed VS Code, which is their recommended free code editor. It's uh, Visual Studio Code made by Microsoft. Um, has great Git inter integration. It's probably one of the most popular uh, code editors out there. And it tells you why you should use it, why you should not use Word or word processing as your uh, as your coding uh, uh, editor. Um, talks about uh, you will do all your work on your virtual machine and not not on your host OS. And then there's an assignment here, basically watching an introductory video, which I did that, and it basically goes over the initial steps of of uh, the initial screens that you see when you install VS Code VS Code for the first time. So trying to go through this quick because it's not um, it wasn't anything crazy and then this is where I stopped so I'll be starting command line basics tomorrow so that'll be uh, it'll be up for up for tomorrow so this will be it for now um, so just uh, had a great great day um, I got a lot done here so feel pretty good about it and uh, we'll catch you all tomorrow talk to you later bye for now